The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to do something a little bit differently here at Duke and Duke today, folks. Uh, about 20 years ago, my good friend Steve Shapiro, who's his birthday today, Steve clocks in at 74 big ones. And he uh, made contact with this dude over in Bakersfield, California, that could predict the market. And he did this, this thing called an artificial intelligence neural network that I had no idea what it was. This is what was going on last night with the S&P folks. I just wanted to show you uh, what can be done if you get really, really lucky. And this is what happened last night because it got really, really lucky. Folks, this was done 24 hours ago before this ever happened. So there must be something to this, but uh, I've been working on it for a long time. But recently, I've made some breakthroughs through my good friend John Jameson over in, the, uh, uh, over in Perth, Australia. And uh, I would, uh, uh, you know, I just, it just looks really interesting. You know, we'll see how it f goes and we'll see what happens with this. Anyway, uh, pay, pay close attention to one market today, folks, uh, and that is the gold market. Uh, that 1400 uh, oh, one that we just hit is really important. Uh, the reason why it is, uh, if we get below that, that breaks a 382, it breaks a 1.618 expansion, and it's, it's more than... Um, uh, the, the the harmonic number of gold, of course, is 34, right? And it's down 36. That's spot on. So that's it. Yeah, uh, John used to be in Great Britain. He has dual citizenship, folks. He he lives in Great Britain and in Perth. He's in Perth visiting right now. And he'll be on his way to spend two months with me here in Tucson, Arizona. So that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be doing some real serious research. And uh, he's a really sharp cookie. And uh and he's, he's a very good trader, too, so it'll be fun. But neat, super nice guy. Devil may care type good guy, as old Billy Ray Valentine would say. Let's rock and roll here with the German DAX, folks. We had some rock and roll movie last night with all that stuff going on with the Chinese things going on. As you can see, we had a little three drive to a bottom pattern, rallied a little bit, and then started to give it up again. If we take a look at the FTSE, uh, you'll see here that we have got up to almost made it to the um, 78 percent level and then uh, gave it up a little bit uh, but the one that's the really interesting one to me and I hope it is to you and that is the uh, German Bund I want to get this up here so that you can see here this is the long-term weekly of the 30-year uh, 30-year tre treasury bond coming out of Germany you can see the ABCD pattern extending into 2019 that's the dark black thunderbolt you can see the uh, expansion of the butterfly pattern from 2016 uh, and that's a really interesting one you know to uh, take a uh, take a look at but take a look at what's happened since that time and this is what's interesting is because uh, we've had just a little bit of uh, selling and so that's a real interesting thing now folks I always said to myself if a deal would come along that was better than anything I was doing, that I would jump on it. And as much as I love working here at TFNN and being with you guys each day, I found something that you just got to jump off and do it, folks. They're going to come out with a 100-year treasury bond at 1%. Boy, I have to get into that one. That sounds like a really good deal. I went and looked at one of my old books, uh, the autobiography of a uh, Bernard Baruch, my own story, and uh, one of the things he said in there, the greatest scam in the market is to inflate something to a high price and people will buy it all the way down. Open interest has dropped again as bonds and notes went up again uh, yesterday. Um, folks, <laughs> Larry's going to get off of his soapbox. Take, take a deep breath. By the way, we're going to have um, – they are talking about it, uh, Mr. Z, on Bloomberg last night. I was up all night last night because I was doing a little bit of research, and I happened to be on the right side in one of those markets. Anyway, the um, 
it, they're doing it. Uh, they're, they're supposed to be the first ones coming out with it is Japan, and then a couple of the European countries are supposed to be uh, coming out. That's what they said on uh, Bloomberg. That was the the next step in the zero interest rates. Um, and uh, you know, this this will play out, I guess. But uh, the open interest is telling you that there's not a lot of players left in there, boys. That's all I can tell you. I don't know if it's. Um, uh, I don't know. Yo, Tucker, you'll be around. You'll be traded in the after. You know, you, Tucker, you've heard of the aftermarket. Well, they got one after the aftermarket, and that's the one you'll be doing. So, we'll be watching these things. Yes, the central banks are working their magic. The sixty-four dollar question is, if they have magic, why haven't they been working it for all these years? Hmm, that's strange. Anyway, okay, let's move on and move on to the next one. We will have Rich Anderson on. Uh, Friday to talk about the grains. We've got a big grain report tomorrow. Uh, you know, get your buying shoes on. If you uh, want to buy some of that stuff, it should happen to be a negative report. And, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll have to wait. Wheat is acting relatively bullish tonight. So that's pretty good. The other one that need to check on a little bit here is uh, – um, hold on one second – I want to uh, get on to the next one here is if we could take a look at the Bitcoin here for a second, because we've made the 61 percent retracement, folks. Uh, we hit 13,000 in the bit and now we're only 6,000 away. We've gone from 3,000 to 13,000. That's 10,000 uh, since January. You think we can't take out those highs at 19,000? You better think again. This is not a bubble. We said that from the very beginning. And, folks, I don't know diddly squat about what a cryptocurrency is. I don't know anything about black, blockchain technology. But uh, I'm going to learn a little bit about it in the next few months. But I, I really don't anything. I mean, they got like 80 different exchanges on this stuff. They get ripped off all the time. But there's something to it. If you got co companies like uh, Google and Facebook going into this stuff, uh, you know, it must be for real. You know, that's the that's the bottom line of, uh, you know, what we're watching. I wanted to share with you a moment here. Uh, this is really a cool chart. We'll talk about it here uh, into the break, but I wanted to mention this. Uh, this is a chart sent to us by uh, one of our good friends over in the U.K., and it's basically uh, they're talking about the gold market. But if you'll see those two dark green arrows there, folks, you see each one is three $328.91. That's A, B, C, D, boys and girls. <laughs> That's A, B, C, D, isn't it? By golly, it is. See, there's a sub wave into the three or the five and expanding five of the triangle of the four of the four and the five of the three and the three of the five. Yep, that's what it is, A, B equals C, D. Now, I want you to notice those little red lines that you see there. All that is is it's taking the Andrews pitchfork line. In other words, you draw from your low straight up on a 45-degree angle. That's what Gann worked on was a 45-degree angle, and then you split that angle into quadrants. You'll see four quadrants in there. Now, the most amazing thing about W.D. Gann, and believe me, I spent a lot of money looking at Gann stuff through the eyes of Jim Twentyman, one of the best researchers that I know. But the key here is the fact that Gann was a 33rd-degree mason. And I will tell you why that's important when we get back. 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Don't miss the last chance to sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner at just $97 a month. Starting July 1st, we're raising the price to $197 a month. This is your last chance to lock in the $97 rate for as long as you remain a subscriber. And as always, new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. Don't miss this last chance to sign up at the low rate of just $97 a month. Sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're talking about uh, WD GAN. I posted a chart that was shown to us by our good friend over in the UK. And basically, what I wanted to mention about WD GAN is, you know, he was in the uh, era of, uh, you know, the, the old era. Of the, uh, he died in 1954, I believe. And uh, he was a heavy smoker. He was a 33rd degree Mason, and any Mason uh, would, would know exactly what Fibonacci is because if you've ever been to a Masonic lodge, or one of their wonderful temples, you could see the, the architecture, everything is based on the golden ratio. Now, again, used five eighths, three eighths, eight fifths, and eight, eight over three, but he never used the word Fibonacci. So that was the main thing. The other thing that we did is because of the fact that he still had, he had a, uh, a two, two sons and a daughter. And what we did was uh, we're going to uh, take a look at that uh, thing. Uh, uh, I'm trying to answer two things at once here, but uh, he had two sons and a daughter. The daughter would not speak to us at all. We had a private detective who was one of our clients there at Drexel Burnham. Very easy to track him down. He left his estate in Palm Beach. The amount of the estate was around a quarter of a million dollars in liquid assets plus a three-story home, a yacht called the Coffee Bean, and some other things. I spoke to one of the sons. He was a bond broker for Dean Witter. The other one was a dentist. Jimmy talked to him, but I spoke to the bond trader at length. He said his dad was an absolute worth at workaholic. He would go up to the third floor and just spend all of his time there. He did a lot of teaching from that area. In fact, one of his students was the father of Jim Elder, my second student that I ever had. And uh, Dr. Jimmy and I speak uh, two or three times a week. So, um, you know, he, he really did a lot of great things. But to make $55 million in the secret accounts in the Bahamas, but they didn't have banks in the Bahamas back in the 20s and 30s and 40s, folks. I mean, they did, but all they did was transact, uh, uh, you know, very small transactions. So anyway, that's a lot of mystery uh, behind him. But uh, and he did a lot of astrological work. But in all that van stuff that Lambert Gann bought uh, was – Two two moving vans full. There was never the word Fibonacci. That was right during the time of Ralph Elliott, which was 1938. So that's the end of that story. But keep an eye on it. That 45-degree line is very good because it 
tells you what the trend is. And if you add it with some of the other patterns, it gives you a pretty good idea of uh, some of the things. I've got to correct something, folks. Uh, I posted the wrong charts for the DAX. Here's where we are. We came off those bottoms. And uh, you can see that we've had a pretty good rally up to the 61% retracement here today uh, in the uh, German DAX. And if we take a look uh, at the FTSE, here we are looking at one that uh, just almost touched the 78% uh, level. And then it backed off when the news came out that there was going to be a Chinese deal. And then, of course, uh, the deal was that China decided they're going to present a deal. So that's what happened. The fact when that deal came out, the S&P rallied a, a grand total of five points before breaking. So we'll see what happens. But overall, you know, that's uh, really what we're looking at. Uh, one of our friends has asked about the uh, sugar. Uh, sugar coffee is looking really good, uh, really good here. Uh, let me get this up. It was trading at 107 this morning, Ruby. Uh, this still looks really good. you got a beautiful ABCD pattern in the coffee up here, 114. I don't see any reason why it's not going to make it, but we might back off a little bit before we get there. But, you know, we had that major bottom down there. You can see the 127 there on the far left in August. That was a 1.270 expansion. And then you go over to April, May. You can see the three patterns there, the 135 pattern. We talked about this on the air here because Ruby's asking about it. And what Ruby asks, Ruby gets. Sugar's acting okay, but it's not acting nearly as well as what we're seeing in the uh in the other because we're back to that uh, 2840, excuse me, 1240 level again. And that is, uh, you know, it's not running away. You know, sugar, I mean, cocoa is, uh, cocoa is moving higher, of course. And so is the um, coffee, but the sugar isn't. But that doesn't mean that it can't, but it's still at major support there at that 1240 a pound. So uh, that's it. By the way, sugar was one of the very first uh, uh, markets that back in 68 or 69, uh, when it got to 66 cents a pound, believe it or not, um, that was where that, that was during the, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Oh, I can't remember. It might have been. I don't remember what it was, but it was around 66 cents. And, uh, of course, went all the way down to three cents a pound after that, which we see that happening uh, all the time. Now, I wanted to share with you something about the – since we were talking about China, I wanted to bring up the uh, situation that we see between the Shanghai market and also the S&P 500. If you'll notice here in the Shanghai composite, it made its low in January, three weeks after – it was around – well, it was two weeks um, – you, you notice we made our bottom on December 26th, and on January the 7th, 10 days later, 13 days later, we made the butterfly pattern. You'll see that butterfly bottom pattern there on the uh, Shanghai composite, and then we had a really strong run-up. Okay, that was a 78% retracement of the high from January. Then we came down to a 61% retracement. And then we went up to 382 retracement, and that's what's happening. You can see the big divergence here between the Shanghai Composite and the, the Dow Jones Industrial. You see that everywhere because the Dow has been the strongest of all of these. So that's the key to uh, keep in mind. You want to buy the strongest and sell the weakest is what they really say. Uh, Marshall's telling us that the, uh, uh, that the Treasury, the T-bonds, uh, I thought we went above that uh, Marshall, I thought that came in at 155.06, and I thought I saw 155.12. Is that right? Am I reading that wrong on the 382 in the bonds? I'll double check it, but that's what the old, uh, that's what my uh, my trade sheet here is. Uh, see, okay. Oh, the cattle. That don't that's the cattle call to be a really good thing. The cattle, I don't call that. I look at that. I don't trade that stuff very often. You know what? I don't even know if it even had a rally. I really don't. I have. I don't even look at it. With all the things that are happening in these financial markets, they keep me up all night as it is anyway. But um, there's just too much happening in the currencies and in the bonds and and uh, gold. My God, gold is such an incredible thing to trade. My God, it it swings a thousand dollars if you blink your eye. So uh, just keep in mind that fourteen hundred uh, that one fourteen hundred dollars uh, an ounce is really really critical. Okay. 
It is, it is 1510. God bless you. I, I made a mistake, which I do all the time. Feeder cattle or limit up, shut the front door and raise the rent. I hope all of you got the email on that that I sent out early in the morning yesterday to buy them before they went limit up. And if you believe that, and if you believe that, I still have two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge for you, so pay very, very close attention to that. Hopefully, we will have a key trading date from our good friend, the wizard. Mr. Winsky will be on in about four or five minutes and relieve me from the stress of trying to give cogent information to all you folks when it's a uh, really, really tough time here. I wanted to share with you one of the other charts from the Elliott Wave Theorist that we get from our good friend MR up there in the state of, uh, of Confusion or Washington, one of those, I don't remember which it is. Let's take a look here. This is the um, from the Elliott Wave letter. What it's showing here is the, uh, the what it, we're seeing the most e extensive peak in optimism in gold since 2011 peak in August of 2011, it was in 1932. Hey, boys and girls, stay tuned for The Wizard, Mr. Winsky, 877-927-6648. Larry Pesamento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I believe we have Norm Winsky on the line down in beautiful Naples, Florida. Norm, are you there? Yes, sir, Larry. Thanks for having me on your show. 
It is our pleasure, Norm. We always like to have you on the show. I am going to turn the microphone over to you and tell the folks what you're looking at, my friend. Okay. Uh, hopefully you can see my notes on the screen there. And I was last on your show on the 14th ahead of the full moon, and we had a big cluster of planetary events over that weekend. And the full moon was early Monday morning, I think 4.30, 4.31 in the morning. And we'll be showing you how, what happened around that time and how these markets responded. These, these are the events that I listed when I was on your show before on the 14th, AC is after the close. 14th was a Friday, so that's over the weekend. And we'll see how that worked out. We'll be going over the charts here in a moment. Uh, the next big cluster was starting around the night of the 20th when Neptune turned retrograde and then into the weekend of uh, the uh, 21st. And so now let's take a look at the charts. Here's your S&P. Was not what we'd like to see. We'd like to, would have liked to see something like there the 1st of January. He had a big, uh, you know, big down or a big up. But at our, at the, our window here, we were looking, it was going absolutely sideways. So what we do is we box in that consolidation there and whichever way it breaks out and it broke out the next day. There's your full moon there on the 17th. And the next day it broke out to the upside. That told you that we're going up. Then the next green arrow there is we nailed the top pretty much. Had Nept uh, Thursday night, the 20th, Neptune turning retrograde or, or in, into the wee hour, next uh, early hours of Friday the 21st. And as you know, the S&P topped the morning of Friday the 21st, which was also the uh, solstice day, you know. And so depending upon which hemisphere you're in, it's either summer or winter. And then we had a little retest high there the next day. And then we can be coming down. Then my next big window is uh, is today, uh, the morning of the uh, not overnight between the 26th, 27th, when Mercury gets the zero latitude is one of my big things. When the planet planet either go planets either go direct or retrograde, or they get to zero latitude, those are my top two planetary phenomena. Let's go look at the bonds. The bonds did not behave. Believe it or not. This stuff doesn't work 100% of the time. I know it's shocking, uh, but there we go. I'm not, I know, Larry. Man, are you sitting, I, uh, are you uh, this will be the there? this will be the last time we have you on. Now you're telling us after uh, four years, you're telling us it doesn't work every time. All right, yeah. All right, Larry. You okay. Sit down. I don't want you, okay. I don't want you to faint or something to fall. You know, hurt yourself. You know. <laughs> All right. Anyway, here's T bond. So they just kind of ignored my window there and just kept going. However, the second window right around the. Uh, the weekend of the 21st, look at that. There's the uh, 24th bonds put in a nice little short-term low there. You see that? Here's your dollar. Dollar was uh, nice, uh, pretty nice to us. Uh, we were day early and not too far off on the price. On the top there, on the uh, 17th, uh, remember that early wee hours there, about 4.30 in the morning, was uh, the full moon on the 17th, and it topped the next day. And then again, we were day early and close to the bottom there on the uh, 24th. Here's your Aussie Dow. Well, let's go look at, because it was a, uh, we're looking at the moon here. There's the, uh, you know, we I always uh, borrow the line from the f famous movie Casablanca, Humphrey Bogart. We're going to round up the usual suspects. And there we go. So the, we have the, let's see, uh, grains, precious metals, financials, all uh, Often dance to the moon. Let's see if that worked. Here's your Aussie dollar there. There's my arrow for the 17th. Bottom the next day, pretty close in price. Here's your British pound, same story, even closer in price. And here's your euro at uh, bottom the next day. And if you want to here's what I, I just use simple trend lines. Now, as you've said in previous uh, shows, Larry, no moving averages, no oscillators. I don't use any candlesticks. I teach all my students to get rid of all that stuff. If you want, you can always use a simple trend line. That works pretty well. And you can see how that helped confirm that the market, will, when you get in one of these windows here, time windows, you can use the trend line to uh, confirm a turn in the market. And there you go. There's your euro there. Full moon was a day ahead of the turn. Here's your yen. The yen has historically been probably the best currency we're dancing to the moon, and there, and it wasn't not as wasn't as obvious with the price action. It was a little bit on the flat side, but it did have a little dip there, right on the full moon, and that was the low. And then it, we 
and it took off to the upside. Here's your silver, the precious metals, off to dance to the moon, and there you go. There's a little dip there in the silver, and then it took off uh, for the way. had another window there for the uh, weekend of the 21st into the 24th, and there you go. We did get the top tick there. That was on the 21st. I got the secondary top there on Monday the 24th, and we're gonna. Uh, here's gold. Everybody's been watching the gold here. We had the little pull. That doesn't look like much on that chart. It's a daily chart. I'll be showing you because it was so. It was really. You'll see in a minute. It really was a spectacular thing that happened here, uh, but it doesn't show up that well on the daily chart. So I'm going to zoom in on the gold here in a moment. But we had a little pullback low there. All right. I think it was within 45, 50 minutes of the exact full moon was the pull of low there on the gold. Here's the chart here. Here's a 30-minute chart. And there you go. Look at that. This dropped about $20 from the previous high to that low there at the time of the full moon. Dropped to the 13, 1337 area there. And it was within, I think, about 50 minutes or so, less than an hour. And then, it took, as we know, it took off. And uh, I get a reason, and I keep keep in mind, let's go back to the daily chart for just a minute, because in early June we had uh, heliocentric, that's from the point of view of the sun, uh, Mars go into the sign of Leo, which is, its ruling body is the sun, and you know, the sun is bright golden and glittery, and so is gold, so there you go, so that's where there's a connection there, in my opinion, and so we want to, the, Mars is the energizer planet. It's saying it's going to energize this market and probably bring a change in trend. In the near term there, it, when you back there, it looked like it was going to put in a near-term top, term, term top. But if we take out that high there, then you're in acceleration mode. And that's what eventually happened. It took out that high. And once that happened, then it was off to the races. So I bring that up because we got some stuff coming up here in early July, which is relevant to that. It's kind of good. We kind of got to repeat uh, with some patterns who are coming up in early July. That's why we look at these past patterns. Now let's go look at the greens. Here's the corn is also a like a second cousin of the gold because it's golden corn, as you know, Larry, growing up there in the corn belt, the farmers call that corn golden corn. They look at it as like gold growing out of the ground, you know? So there you go, the corn if I showed you the uh the uh you know ten minute chart, thirty minute chart, you'd see the corn. I think the corn uh, turned within 20, 30 minutes of the full moon there in 4.30 in the morning on the 17th. So you may put a little top in there. You might remember back before the full moon, Larry, people are saying the entire corn belt is under underwater. There's not going to there may not be any corn this year. You know, it's going to the moon. And guess what? At the moon, it topped out, and then we came down. So don't don't worry. <laughs> don't worry about crop reports or anything. You know, kind of, all you got to do is know when the moon is, you know, and these different planetary events are. are got to pay a few bills. Now, Larry? Yeah. Got to pay a few bills. We'll be back with Norm Winsky of Astro Trend. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, with Norm Winsky of AstroTran. Norm, we have a question for one of our listeners, and your experience with WDGAN is? I've been studying since, uh, the, I think, about 75, 1975 or so. Here's the probably the most interesting story I have. So, I don't know, maybe you knew this guy. Uh, you know, I heard through the GAN grapevine that there was still a guy still around uh, who had worked with GAN for a while, and so I called this guy up. Turns out that his father had been worked with GAN as a, you know GAN's astrological consultant, and so this guy was you know took the uh, the torch was passed to him as a young guy, and so he was when I called him up in the early 80s, he was still around. I think he, he I think he lived another uh, 15 20 years or so. You know he was an older guy then. But he told me that uh, he worked with Gann for 10 years. His name was Quarter. You ever heard of Quarter there, Larry? No. No? Okay. He lived in name. Pittsburgh, and he said he worked with Gann for 10 years. And the, the important thing that he told me was that, first and foremost, Mr. Gann was astrological. That's what he told me. So, mm -hmm. so Gann didn't publicize his astrology very much, kind of kept it under the radar, I think maybe for – his uh, favored top students, he shared that with him, but he didn't, I, I haven't found anything in writing where he detailed how he used the astrology, but we know he did. Uh, old, uh, uh, Mr. Quarter told me a story about how uh, in Gann's later years, oh, if night, you probably know, familiar with the uh, sort of well-known uh, 1940 soybean chart. If you look on that soybean chart, uh, you can see where the planets all convert, Mars and Jupiter converge there right at the top uh, the soybean market it's on his chart and uh, that he went short there uh, but uh, by then by uh, Gaines latter years he was getting kind of conservative so he only went short one con I think it was 380 something on the top there the beans and he went short one contract and and took a dollar out you know five thousand dollars which that would have bought you a, a house then I guess you know right back in a good one yes. right what's that I understand. Yeah, that's that's yeah, a lot. So, anyways, that's a, that's the two stories I have related to with Mr. Qu Quarter, who's supposedly worked with Gan for uh, for ten years. If you want, I'll, uh, after the show, I'll dig up some information on Mr. Quarter. He spoke before at the, uh, uh, I think he spoke before the Australian Technical Analysis uh, Group there in uh, I think it's Sydney. And so he kind of he was kind of under the radar there for a long time and kind of 
I introduced him to a friend of mine, and he kind of that guy kind of brought him out of the <laughs> brought him out of the uh, shadows there, you know. Anyway, mm -hmm. so uh, we'll go back to that. I hope I answered the the, the yes, person's that's question fine. there. That's fine. Okay, so there we go. It's got oats. Uh, oats is kind of like my platinum, the you know thin market that you probably don't want to trade, but it, because it it follows the rules so nicely, you kind of it's kind of fun to watch. Just for for the intellectual exercise, I think maybe two horses in Colorado trade these oats. That's about it, you know. So there we go. There's the oats topping out. Uh, well, I missed the top there. They topped the day the day before there on the Friday the 14th, and we got you would have gotten a secondary top there, just a few pennies off the top on the full moon, and then down into my next big window was the 24th, and you were pretty close to the bottom on that. So I think it looks like it might have been a day a penny off the from the high below there from the uh, previous trading day. Here's your beans again. If you want to confirm these signals, these ch change in trading windows, all you got to do is draw a simple trend line. If you're go if it's going up, draw it under the uh, bottoms there. If it breaks the trend line, the trend is changing. There you go. So there's my green arrow there at top the next day. There's my next green arrow, my next window. And it made a little uh, one day bottom there that was a little iffy, I admit. And so, but you did have a chance to make some money there if you had a short leash on that trade, you know. Here's the wheat. The wheat was not too bad. There you go. Made a top right on the 17th. Went down, had a kind of retest there on the opening on the 24th, and then up on the wheat. Here's crude oil. I was really uh, hoping. The crude oil would get to, uh, I was hoping the crude oil would keep going down into when Neptune turned retrograde. Neptune is associated with oil, but the uh, oil did not pay attention to me. And so there's another clunker trade, you know, you, you know, where you went up, you probably would have just got stopped out uh, in the next day or two and that taken a small loss. Here's the coffee, though. The coffee danced nicely uh, with uh, my pattern here, looking for something over the weekend of the 21st into the 24th. And there you go. It had a nice pullback low there and right around a buck. And then it rallied uh, about six cents uh, as of last night. And so, as you know, Larry, six cents in coffee is about, I think, $2,250. So that's a, that's a, gets you a super size at Wendy's, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. Or, or, or a cup of coffee at Dunkin' Donuts, right? Whatever. Or you could even go to Starbucks on that kind of money, right? <laughs> Yeah, All right, so. uh, moving ahead. Let's look ahead into the future now, Larry. Let's get out the old crystal ball here. Right now, it's overnight, last night, 26 after the close. Right now, we just had Mercury zero south latitude. That's an important. Could be important. Now, what what are we looking for at these time windows here? We want to see a market at an extreme, and so if it's just going sideways, you're probably not going to get a very good trade out of it. Uh, but there you go. We're going to be looking at the, look at the corn, oats, soybean stocks of wheat. And looking ahead in the next week, uh, the, uh, after the right around the night of the 1st of July, you have something with the U.S., so there could be some uh, little military clash or something there right around the 1st. Maybe the Iranians are uh, Iranians. Iranians. Try that again. Iranians. Uh, maybe uh, they're going to try some more shenanigans or something. Uh, but more importantly, that night, geocentric, that's from the point of view of the Earth, Mars is going to go into Leo. I don't have that listed here because uh, I haven't written the July letter yet, so I had to kind of uh, kind of do an audible here, kind of throw this stuff together quickly. And so Mars is going to, geocentric Mars is going to enter Leo. And the next day, Larry, there's a solar eclipse. Get it? Solar eclipse. It's all sun Leo related. And that means we got to look at corn. Gold and OJ, right? So watch. That's a huge window, potential window here. The July the second, uh, plus or minus a day, uh, it could be huge for if these markets, any of these markets that I mentioned, get to some extreme. Uh, be prepared for a, a big change in trend there. Okay, there you go. The afternoon of July the second, we got the new moon solar eclipse. That'll be in the sign of Cancer, which is silver, but it also has a general a possible general effect on your financials, grains, and precious metals, and uh, like I said, especially silver. And then uh, into the third, nine to the third, we have a thing here with the moon's north node in Cancer again, uh, and Jupiter, and that's old silver in stocks. And then you got another planet at zero latitude, 
And, you know, that's one of my top things. I'll be watching the Venus markets, which are cattle, copper, cotton, stock, sugar, and wheat. And so that'll be the night of the 3rd into the 4th of July weekend. We got some big fireworks here next week, Larry. It's a little, mm -hmm. little 4th of July humor there. So, when's, and, our, when, uh, when's our day off? Uh, is that going to be... Uh, uh, thir Thursday the 4th uh, is a holiday. Okay, so we'll be off Thursday, but the markets will be on Friday. That means they're going to be deader than heck, probably. Okay, well, hopefully uh, this stuff will get the markets moving, you know. Why don't you stay uh, on for just a minute and tell the folks how good you are and how they can reach you. Sounds good. Okay, we'll be right back with Norm Winsky, folks. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, Norm Winsky, we have about 90 seconds for you to give us a nice little commercial and tell us okay, about your free... Quick, going to make two quick comments. Uh, Mr. Gann, I remember something that I want to tell, share the folks... Now, Gann, Gann said that time was more important than price. Uh, if mm -hmm. you folks want to, we don't have much time, so folks want to call up, yeah. I'll explain that. But without time, price is meaningless, you know. Uh, okay. then we got one more event, one more window here, the weekend of the 5th. I didn't list it all, but uh, we have Mercury going happy healing, so it's some extreme. In the Mercury cycle, there, happy healing is when Mercury is the farthest, farthest point from the sun. 
And then we also have Mercury turning retrograde. It's all happening in the sign of Leo. So we, I'm expecting some big fireworks there in your gold and your corn. And uh, I know nobody cares, but also OJ. All right, let's move on ahead to uh, getting to know me and getting to know you folks. Uh, they're out there in Tigerland, Larry. Uh, so okay. I've been doing this a long time, almost as long as you. And uh, about 50 years or more for me. And so there we go. Here's my information. I was a floor trader in Chicago for 12 years. And so I got a little bit of experience. And I got free classes, free letters. All you got to do is call me up right away. I'm on a monthly cycle. So you need to get a hold of me right away if you want the July information. There's some more fantastic stuff coming later in July. And so if you want to get on board here, call me right away. Here's my inf my info here. Here's, I'm in beautiful Naples, Florida. There's my phone, 239-594-3939. There's my Skype, nwinski underscore digit one. There's my email, nwinski at embarkmail.com. And so looking forward to helping some of your folks. I got day trading too, didn't talk about that today, but I teach people day trading in about 30 minutes and I have some people are making money the next day. So that's, uh, there we go. Any questions or comments, Larry, from the you were No, the I, uh, I I really appreciate you alerting us to this July the 5th thing. So we want to really pay close attention to that as they get closer. Maybe we'll have you on as a cameo appearance to see if we see something really clear for one of those days. Do the old walk on, right? <laughs> you, uh, walk on. There you go, Billy Ray. Thank you, Norman. Have a wonderful weekend, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.